During the long and often painful history of the Jewish people, our enemies often differed with respect to their choice of weaponry, often organized and sophisticated, and other times more crude and personal. But they typically agreed on a common goal, to kill the Jews. And that's why there's that famous joke summarizing all of Jewish holidays. They tried to kill us, we won, let's eat. But there's one exception. At the time of the Hanukkah story, when we were fighting the Greeks, the Greeks weren't trying to kill us. They were trying to Hellenize us, trying to assimilate us. They were trying to kill the Torah, trying to kill Judaism, but not the Jews. The Greeks would have been perfectly happy had we agreed to be good Greeks, no longer insisting on our annoying habits like Shabbos and circumcision. But we fought back, and we won. There was a physical battle, but that's not what we're celebrating. We're celebrating our spiritual survival. And at the heart of the Hanukkah miracle, those little jugs of oil that kept producing light for eight days, and the menorahs that we light, remembering that, light, we know, represents the light of Torah, which makes us unique. And maybe that's why Hanukkah is the one holiday during which you can run, but you can't hide, as the saying goes. Every other holiday can be observed, for the most part, in private. We can eat our matzah on Passover in our homes. We can pray on Yom Kippur in our synagogues. Even on sukkahs, when we're told to build the sukkah and go outside our home, you can build it in your backyard or your back deck. There's no obligation that your neighbor has to see your sukkah. Not so on Hanukkah. When we light our menorahs, we've got to light them right in front of our homes or in the front windows, not the side, not the back. You've got to light it in a place where people are going to see that menorah from the street. And you've got to light it right at nightfall when there's still people around, not at 3 a.m. And maybe that's why the Hanukkah story always falls out during the Torah portions where in which we read the story of Yosef, of Joseph, who was always proud and always proclaimed his Judaism no matter where he was. In this week's Torah portion, we see the wine minister, after being freed from jail, referring to Yosef as the Ivri, the Hebrew, the Jew. Obviously, Yosef had introduced himself in jail to his dungeon mates as a Jew. I can tell you this. If I'm ever captured in Egypt and thrown into a dungeon, this happened once to my father, by the way, so if you ever meet him, ask him to tell you the story. It's a classic. But if it ever happens to me and I find myself in an Egyptian dungeon, I can tell you now, my last name's going to be Robinson, not Rothenberg. But not Yosef. No matter where he was, he was always proclaiming himself publicly to be a Jew. And that's what we do on Hanukkah. We go to that front window, we put our menorah there, we light it, we thump our chests, and we tell the world, I'm proud to be Jewish, Judaism's still here, the Torah's still here, and this is a Jewish home. Happy Hanukkah. Thank you.